Hi there, this is one of a number of videos relating to the Hotpoint FDW60 dishwasher which will involve dismantling and component replacement. I'll also be covering some of the error codes associated with this model during the relevant videos. Before you start work on any domestic appliance, make sure it's turned off from the mains power supply. In this video, I'll be concentrating on the main circulation pump, which is just one of the possible reasons for the flashing 4th and 5th neons on the console panel. The layout of this model is similar to that of the Hotpoint SDW60 and the DWC10, as well as a number of other models made by Hotpoint, Creda, Indesit and Ariston. Should the 4th and 5th neons start to flash after the machine's been working for a short time, the manual says that one of the possible causes is the main circulation pump. Now this can be because it's blocked, jammed or faulty. Before you start work, remove the outlet hose from the standpipe, if it's accessible, and lower it into a washing up bowl. This will empty any water left in the tub, including most of the water in the sump as well. You'd also be advised to remove the filters and soak up any remaining water in the sump with a sponge because the machine will be laid on its back or side to gain access to the circulation pump and any water left in it will spill out over the floor. It will also be advisable to lay it on something like a sheet or old towel to prevent scratching it. Plus, the towel will help soak up any water that may be come out of it. Remove the two screws holding the kick panel on. Lift it and it will come free. This will give you access to the three screws on the front of the base plate. There's another three at the rear of the base plate as well. When they've all been taken out, it can be removed. But be careful because it's still attached by two wires that are connecting to the float switch. This switch also has its own error code indicator, which is just the fourth neon flashing, but that's another video. It may not seem obvious at first, but there are three terminals on this switch and only two wires. So make a note where they fit or take a photo so they go back on the correct ones. Apart from the obvious plug on the solenoid, there's also a pair of wires from the capacitor that run over the back of the motor to this connection. You can remove them whenever you want, but I prefer doing it while the motor is still supported. It may be easier to remove the spring before you start taking the hoses off. This way you have more flexibility with the motor. The centre hose is no problem, but the rear hoses are a bit harder to get at. As you can see, the spring mount is just pushed onto the rear of the motor. A very simple idea which is easy to remove and refit. There are three hoses on the circulation pump and they all have to be removed for it to come off. The clips are all the same size, but two of the hoses are at the rear of the pump. Removing the hose clips is not quite as hard as you may think. Just insert a screwdriver into the opening and turn. They do say you can reuse these clips by squeezing together with a pair of wire snips, but I'd rather use Jubilee clips instead. Apart from the obvious possibility of leaks, a few of the clips are in really awkward positions for refitting, and they are just as hard to get to for removing, so if you can't undo them, you may have to just lever the hoses off, but be careful not to damage them in the process. You can do all these electrical continuity tests with the motor in place. You don't need to remove it just for that. But be careful when touching the capacitor because it holds a charge and you may get an electric shock if you touch both terminals at the same time while it's still charged up. The safest thing to do would be to hold the insulated handle of a screwdriver and short out the terminals with a blade. This will discharge any current it may be holding. Unless you have a mega you won't be able to test the capacitor because the multimeters just aren't powerful enough. I'm using a mega to charge this capacitor so I can show the ferocity of the discharge should you inadvertently touch it while it still holds a charge. Believe me, it hurts. If you do a continuity test on the valve, you'll only get a quick reading, but that's enough to let you know there's continuity through the coil. Use a screwdriver to turn the rotor. If it's jammed, check the pump housing for possible restrictions, such as chicken bones or bits of glass or china. If you still can't free the impeller, you'll have to buy a new circulation pump, because they're not serviceable and they come as a complete unit. Before refitting or installing a new circulation pump, make sure the screws on the Jubilee clips are all facing in the correct direction so you can do them up, 
or you may find you'll have to take it off again to refit the clips. When you're taking something apart for the first time, then do it slowly and make notes, or take photos of wiring and fitments, so you know where everything goes when it's time to reassemble it. There's no prizes in doing the job fast, just aggravation when you've forgotten where a part or a wire fits. I'd advise that once all the hoses have been fitted, if you screw the centre hose clip down tight, this will allow you a bit more freedom to fit the retaining spring. You can then concentrate on tightening the remaining two hoses without fear of the unit dropping off. As you can see, fitting the spring is really simple. It's just a case of pushing it onto the end of the motor housing. And because it is a spring, it grips the housing tightly. Make sure the hoses are on properly before tightening the clips, or you could end up with the leak. You'll need a ratchet or angled drive to tighten this clip, because there isn't very much clearance to get your hand inside the unit. Remember to reconnect the wiring plug from the motor to this socket, or it won't work. And don't forget this plug either. Just remains to put the base back on, once you've reconnected the float switch. Check where you previously made notes as to where the connecting plug goes. Then you can refit the kick panel, Stand the machine up and the job's done.